So welcome back uh, to the Spring College. Uh, so let's start with the third lecture of uh, Edgar on uh, stochastic thermodynamics. Okay, uh, so welcome to the third, third lecture. Um, uh, today I will discuss briefly fluctuation theorems, which is uh, one of the key results in the foundations of stochastic thermodynamics. But before going into this, uh, I will um, discuss uh, again one of the proofs that I showed yesterday, and I believe it was totally unclear what I did, <laughs> because even myself, when I was looking at my notes yesterday, I couldn't remember what I did right. <laughs> and this happens a lot in physics. So uh, yesterday I was showing the second law, so mainly that s dot uh, dot, so it's done derivative on average, is always positive. And I was going through this uh, proof and at some point here, it was very unclear. I must uh, recognize, okay? So I would put a big uh, question mark here and I'll try to, to say uh, what did I do in this step. So I believe uh, you recognize that, uh, okay, this is the system entropy and this is the environment entropy. Uh, this is uh, easy from what I explained. And that the first term on average is zero. This is just because of conservation of probability, right? This is zero. So the only term we, we should uh, take care of is this second one, which is j over dp times dx dt. So here, I, I want to show you that, okay, this uh, transforms into a, in a simpler kind of form if we do a change from Stratonovich to Ito, but this part wasn't clear in my explanation. So I'll try uh, to explain it a bit better. So first of all, to understand uh, this proof, uh, forget about this term, okay? So I think this you don't need. And you can jump directly from here to here by using the equation that I have in the middle, this theorem. You see that uh, what I'm doing is I'm transforming a Stratonovich integral or a Stratonovich product into, so like here, into an Ito product of the same thing. So here I have Ito product of the same thing, j divided by dp times dx, fine. And then there is a second term that has a ds, well, I write ds, but it's dt, and it involves g squared, as I show here, divided by two times f prime. Okay, what is g squared? g squared is the amplitude of the noise. So in reality here, we can write this as g. So g squared in reality for this model is 2d. So g squared over two is nothing but d. Okay, so when we have here divided by d, in the next terms, there was a d divided by d and a d divided by d, which cancelled. Okay, this is the first thing. The second thing is that there is f prime here. And what is this is for f times dx, but now we have j divided by dp times dx. So we have to do derivative of j divided by dp. So the derivative of j divided by dp is the derivative with respect to x, is uh, okay, we do parcel with respect to x of uh, jxt divided by d dxt is to take out the d. And then what you get is uh, the first term will be parcel x of j divided by p. And the second will be j parcel x of p, actually with a minus, this should be a minus, divided by d squared. Okay. These are the two terms that appear here and here. Right. So why? Next, I said that this is equal to zero. So this is because I, I've applied the Fokker-Fock equation. So the fokker equation says that parcel x of j, okay, I'm doing a big mess, but <laughs> parcel x of j is a uh, parcel t of p with a minus. And this I show you up here. Okay, this is equal to zero. Okay, that's why we can cancel this term. So we are just left with two terms. This one, which has Ito product with dx, and this one, which has dt, right? These are the only terms that survive in this calculation. So now, okay, I continue and I say uh, in the last line, I have, what I've done is, so in the previous line, I used the focal point equation. In the next line, I use the Langevin equation. I wrote dx as mu f plus uh, square root of two d dv. Okay, that's why the first term appears mu f, then there is a dv term, and then there is the last dt term that comes before. So I have three terms, but I'm saying the one in the middle is zero. 
Why the one in the middle is zero? It's because I'm using uh, a theorem from Ito calculus. So any function evaluated at xt times the increment of the Brownian motion multiplied in Ito sense on average is zero. That's why the term in the middle is zero. So we are left with just these two terms. So the first term and, to be multiplied by dt, I guess, no? Uh, actually, yes, <laughs> I forgot as well. <laughs> here, I, I, I'm, I, we miss a dt here, exactly, exactly. Okay, there is a dt missing. On the right, you see j parcel xp divided by p squared times dt. So there are two terms that go with dt in this algebra, okay? Uh, actually, what I'm calculating here is the average of ds. Then I will have to divide by dt to get uh, uh, ds dt. Right, so, so there are two terms that survive. And then, uh, okay, these are the two terms put together. And what I use in the next step is the definition of probability current. So mu f minus d parcel x of p is j. So I get j squared divided by dt squared. Uh, and these are all things that are in this formula are positive. That's why uh, this quantity is always positive. Okay, there is an, another way to, uh, to show the second law, and this uh, it will come later in, in my course, which is the fact that uh, okay, we know that S dot for a trajectory T is KB times the logarithm of the probability for a trajectory, which I'll call like this, divided for the, by the probability of the time reverse trajectory. And we call it XP plus. So when you take averages of this, if you take average, what you do is you integrate this with, uh, okay, you multiply this by P, uh, sorry, P X T. And then this is a path integral. You integrate over all possible trajectories, D X T. And this thing here is P, you can see as P log P divided by Q. So this is a kullback liler divergence in reality. This is the kullback liler divergence between the probability to see a trajectory and another measure, I call it Q, but in reality is the probability to see the time reverse trajectory. Okay, and we know from information theory that any kullback liler divergence is positive. So you can get a simple proof of the second law from purely information theoretic um, point of view, right? So here I use the definition or, or the result that I use uh, showed the other day that the stochastic and the reproduction associated to a trajectory is KB times the logarithm, the path probability to see XT divided by the path probability in the time reversal process to see the time reversal trajectory. Okay, this is another way, shorter maybe, but the other one is more physical. So uh, both are correct. Right, so I hope this helps. <laughs> I think yesterday it wasn't uh, my best day. So uh, this is the first thing. Please, if you have other questions, uh, this is the time, uh, ask me anything. Otherwise, um, I'll go with, is there a question? Uh, excuse me, I have a question. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, yesterday, when we went through um, the case in which we have a discrete system uh, with uh, uh, with a Markov process, okay, mm -hmm. uh, at a certain point we defined the entropy, the environmental entropy, as KB, the log of the ratio of the um, of the jumping rates, and uh, uh -huh. okay, I didn't get uh, whether that was a definition or if there were some other reasons why for that. So I didn't get the physics actually out of that. <laughs> This is often a, an assumption, a key assumption in stochastic thermodynamics. So you have a state one and state two. And when you are not in equilibrium, you are out of equilibrium, you assume that the rate in going from one to two and the rate in going from two to one are related in terms of the environment entropy. So this is related as E to the minus the environment entropy in going the environmental entropy change in going from state one to state two divided by KB. This is something we assume in stochastic thermodynamics. Okay, it is the way we can do thermodynamics. If we don't have this constraint, it's very, very complicated to stochastic thermodynamics because we don't know 
uh, in, in every trajectory, what, in every jump, what is going on either in the system or in the environment. This is called the local detail balance condition. Local detail balance condition. But many physical systems obey this, this, uh, this relation. For instance, molecular motors or colloidal systems uh, obey, obey this, uh, this relation. This would be typically the minus the heat going from one to two. So this is a key assumption that we use throughout stochastic thermodynamics and is valid in, in many small systems that are in an isothermal environment or in equilibrium environments. Okay, so the, the key point here is that we have a system immersed in a thermal bath and this, this one or several thermal baths are in equilibrium. You can have non-equilibrium here in the system, but you are in equilibrium in the environment. That's why you have this, uh, what, that's what leads you to, to prove this, this equality, okay? You can also go from microscopic dynamics to mesoscopic and, and prove this, this, this result, but um, this is even more technical, so I just, I'm just sketching briefly the, the, the assumptions, okay? Uh, if the environment is in non-equilibrium, this is not valid, okay? So all the models that I'm, I'm going to show, I assume there is a system may be driven of, out of equilibrium in an environment that is in, in thermal equilibrium, okay? Yes, okay, thank you so much. Perfect. Other questions? So is this Hello? usually a good assumption? Oh, sorry. Sorry? Uh, I, I wanted to ask, assuming or modeling systems to be in thermal baths, is it a good assumption looking at well, uh, experiment? Yes, yes, looking at experiments, yes. Uh, because for instance, you have a colloidal system that has one degree of freedom. You have it in a, in a bath of water molecules and there are typically one Avogadro number of water molecules around it. So I would expect that the, the, the bath has reached equilibrium at some point. Uh, also the variables of the bath, something very important is the, the time scales. So, how long it takes for a variable in the bath to relax to equilibrium. So if you are comparing an atom of, or, a, or a water molecule, which has a size of angstroms with a colloid that has a size of microns, this system relaxes much faster to equilibrium than this one. So you can really, in many situations, assume uh, that you, the bath is in equilibrium, whereas the system is out of equilibrium, okay? Of course, you cannot do this with atoms, two atoms, and do a stochastic thermodynamics of one water molecule with another water molecule in vacuum. This is not ruled by stochastic thermodynamics, okay? You need clearly a separation of time scales, degrees of freedom that relax fast and reach to equilibrium very fast, and degrees of freedom that are slow, like the position of this colloid, and uh, take a longer time to, to reach equilibrium. This is essential for, to do a, a stochastic thermodynamics in a way that makes sense. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, what is the difference between this stochastic entropy and, for instance, the entropy in statistical mechanics? Okay, very important. Uh, very important question. So, the entropy in, uh, in, uh, in classical mechanics, for example, the entropy production in, I told you the other day of. Uh, Okay, you have this process, you have a gas, this has millions, okay, this has 10 to the 23 particles, degrees of freedom, okay? And then you compress this gas and you finish in this situation, okay? Along this process, you have a dissipation of heat, right? And you have a change in entropy because here there is higher entropy as initial of the system than here as final. The system is confined, so there is, there is less disorder in the system. So for this process, imagine you do it at, at a given speed, call it V, uh, you can say that the total entropy production is minus the heat divided by the temperature plus the size. Okay, fine. However, the key point is that this, in microscopic dynamics, this is a number. That the entropy of a compression of a gas, if you go to the books, it's, you can calculate it. There is a number. So it's, I don't know, uh, five, five kibis, for example. No? This is the microscopic dynamics. OK. 
it will be more because we, we have a bigger system. But okay, so here what happened was the following: you had a a protocol which was, for example, you were changing the the volume of, of the gas or the pressure, so you were increasing the the pressure, something like this, and you had the response of your system which was, for instance, I don't know the the volume which was decreasing or whatever, no? But you will have a response of the system that is, okay, let me call the response, I don't know, R, do curve like this, okay, fine. So it means you do one protocol and you get out of it one response. When you have a small system, this is not the case. This is not the case. So you do, for example, a compression in the sense, a compression could be, for instance, I don't know how to say, but uh, one example could be you have a harmonic trap like this, and you have a particle initially at zero, and you compress the system in the way that you, you make the trap stiffer. So you go to a situation where the trap is like this, okay? So you have a protocol as well. The protocol here will be, if, if this is a trap with energy U, which will be one half of a kappa, Kappa of T. Okay, I think this is not very nice. <laughs> I should change the color of this. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. This will be Kappa of T. X squared. This means that um, I am changing the stiffness of the trap. For example, take this. Okay, this will be Kappa of T. Okay. When you have a small system, it means fluctuations are important. So you can apply this protocol once and get a response, for example, of the uh, position. Here, the response will be the, the position of the particle. And in one run, you may have this, OK? But if you repeat the same process on the next day at the same time with the same initial condition, you won't get the same response because of the fluctuations of the system. You can get a totally different response. Okay. That's why we do stochastic thermodynamics because we have the same uh, physical process, the same driving on the system, but they can be even with the same initial condition, totally different responses of the system. That's why we 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 uh, introduce the notion of stochastic entropy is an entropy that depends on the evolution of the system, which is uh, fluctuating. So if, if you and I, we do the same process, compression of, of a colloidal particle with the same experiment, we start in the same conditions, we will get different response from the system and different measurements of heat. You get the point? Yes, yes. So it's like uh, we are recovering the information of fluctuations. We lost, we lose the fluctuation by using these stochastic methods. Yeah, using the stochastic methods, we we um, we cannot not only analyze the dynamics because the dynamics would be what is the what is the particle at time t or what are the distribution of the particle, but we can also uh, analyze the thermodynamics. So each of these trajectories that we, we obtain have a different value for the heat, for the work, for the entry production. And the, the, this, I mean, this is clear because the system has fluctuations. So stochastic thermodynamics is a way of analyzing the fluctuations of a system in reality. So we are not only interested in, in where is the particle, but also on which uh, thermodynamic signature the, 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 this uh, motion had, okay? I hope this was more clear. Yes, thank you. Okay, other questions? These questions are good because I think it clarifies better what uh, I'm talking about. So, um, all right, I'll go on with the lecture. So today uh, I wanted to introduce at least briefly what are the fluctuation theorems. Uh, and okay, let me just erase this. Uh, all right, I think I don't know. Okay, so fluctuation theorems are, in few words, 
are statistical properties that obey the fluctuations of work or, or heat or of, of entropy production with a degree of universality. So, okay, I hear, I call theorems, but most of the time they are not theorems because physicists, we don't do theorems, we do, we obtain results, okay? I have a, I have a problem now with this uh, drawing. Give me a second because I, I'm having some trouble with my tablet. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm having a lot of trouble to. Okay, I have to close the app. <laughs> sorry. Okay, <laughs> I don't know how to solve this. Uh, drawing mode. Drawing mode. Sorry. It's not working. Okay, I have to close this app and open it again. Okay, we're back. Draw and expand. All right, so fluctuation theorems are uh, results that um, are obeyed by uh, many physical systems. For example, uh, you can find a result that is true for Langevin systems, also for uh, Markov systems, etc. This is somehow a degree of universality. Okay, I'm really having a, a big trouble with this app. This is not working at all. So, um, okay. Okay, this is not working. Uh, I go back to Zoom, I stop share and I share a uh, whiteboard. Okay, you see my whiteboard, no? Um, okay. Great. <laughs> All right. So, let me see. No. It's not working at all today. Okay, I'm really sorry. Uh, I don't know what is going on with my apps, but um, I would say no, but I can't, okay. Join, no, no, it's not, it's not charts, it's something else. Uh, I, I was having a problem with my, okay, I'm really sorry, but it was a problem with my iPad. Please, can you stop the recording for a second? Otherwise, this will be uh, very useless for uh, uh, this post. I will send you the, the reference later, uh, just because uh, the lack of time. And I'll go direct to one of the key results that, um, is from the year 2000, that is Crookes practicing theorem. Okay, so as every, well, I put theorem because we usually call for this relations, as every theorem, uh, theorems have a, some assumptions. So we have to first introduce uh, the setup. And the setup, I can explain it with a kind of an experiment. Imagine you have a colloidal particle in, in an optical trap, as I explained the other day. This is like having a particle in a spring. And uh, we are at time t equals to zero in equilibrium. This is time t equals to zero, and we are in equilibrium. This will be a small system, uh, which will be formed by this colloid, and also a small chain, which could be, for example, DNA. This, that is attached or to a pipette, okay? Pipette is here, and we can, control, so in our case, the control parameter will be the position of this pipe. So we have a reference frame, zero, and this will be X, which is the location of the pipe. Actually, you, we can also call this lambda because it's our control parameter. So we could here say that this is lambda of T, okay? So we will be starting in equilibrium, which will be this um, configuration, and we will have a, a process in which we will take this pipette and move it away from the trap. Of course, this particle will suffer fluctuations, so it will be moving left and right randomly. 
uh, and the pipette will be moving in principle in a deterministic way. So at a later time, what we will have is uh, the particle and the trap. So the, the, the particle can move out of the focus slightly. So it will suffer like a harmonic interaction. It will be like a spring uh, for the particle. And then uh, here, and the piper will be a bit, sorry, uh, a bit further from, from what it was before at time zero. So the piper will be, for example, here. And the DNA will have now, I don't know, it could have even a loop like this, okay? This is in the middle, we are in, in out of equilibrium. And uh, at the very end, so we do a process of a finite duration in which at the very end, we let the particle relax again to equilibrium. So we are pulling from this uh, DNA chain with the pipette. And we, we, we are doing a, a protocol in which we are stretching the DNA. This you can find very well explained in papers by uh, the lab of Felix Retort, uh, who is uh, one of the pioneers of these uh, single molecule experiments with colloidal systems. And you can reach a final equilibrium state with the DNA a bit overstretched like this, and the pipette in a further position like this. Okay, and this will be time t, t final, and we are in another equilibrium state with a different value of lambda. Okay, here lambda had a small value, and here lambda is bigger. Okay, as uh, related to the question made by Idris before, as you see, when you have a small system like DNA, when you pull uh, the DNA, you will have different responses in different realizations. So the fluctuations will be very, very uh, clear here. The key point is that we will define this process in going in this direction as the forward process. This will be forward in time, forward process. And we will also look at the reverse process in which we start at time t0 in this equilibrium state. Okay, this is equilibrium. In the middle, there is non-equilibrium driving. Uh, and we will go backward. So we will do something like this. Okay, this will be so-called the backward process. Backward process, okay? This is the setup for the theorem of Crookes that you can find in, uh, in two papers. In One is in PRE, uh, okay, let me, let me just write here. One is, papers are single author. It's just uh, Crookes, Gavin E. Crookes, PRE 99, and there's another one, PRE 2000. Both are great to read. They are very well explained. And I mean, they are really classics in the field. Okay, so we are saying we start in equilibrium and we finish in equilibrium. So what is important in equilibrium is the um, partition function. So uh, something that we can say out of this process is the following, that at time zero, we will be in a canonical equilibrium state with temperature T, and at time at TF, we will be in a canonical equilibrium state with temperature TF. So in particular, uh, I will focus on what is said in this paper in this paper. So I will follow the notation in this paper. And I will uh, introduce first a trajectory in the forward process. And that trajectory, I will call it like this, x. Sometimes I will call it uh, x bar, sometimes x bar t, and so on, which will be a sequence of observations, x0 up to x at time t, okay? Or at time t, in time t, it's okay. This will be a trajectory in the forward process, and we will also uh, introduce the time reverse trajectory. Time reverse trajectory. Trajectory, which, uh, well, yesterday I used a notation x tilde, but I realized that's not the best notation. So I think it's better to use x d bar plus, which is the time reverse trajectory of this. It, it will mean that the first thing I see well, I will call it x plus zero. So it's the first element of x plus is x plus zero. Then it will be x plus one. And at some point we'll have x plus t in such a way that x plus zero equals the final value in the forward trajectory. So it's like time mirroring the forward trajectory. 
this will be uh, xt then to see uh, xt minus one and then find ending in x0 okay this is the time the time mirroring of the forward trajectory this is notation i will sometimes also call it x bar and sometimes call this uh, x bar plus okay bar stands for trajectory and plus stands for time reverse okay so at time zero i mean equilibrium it means that the distribution of x of the position of the colloid at time zero p x at time zero is a canonical distribution so it's e to the minus beta e x of time zero minus f zero okay f zero is a uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, also, is it x0 is equal to x plus t? Yes. Oh. Yes. OK, so what I'm saying here is, for example, you have a trajectory of this like this, like this, like this, like this. This is the forward trajectory, xt. And the time reverse trajectory will be, I start from here. So it will be first here, the second will do like this, then we'll do like this, and then like this. Okay. I have done a time mirroring of the trajectory. Okay. Okay, maybe another example is we have sorry. Uh, this goes out. This would be uh, okay. Or what trajectory will be something like this. Okay, this is one forward trajectory xt and the backward trajectory will be time mirroring so it will be something like this okay makes sense to you now or not yes thank you okay please stay if, if not say it please okay this is the initial distribution what is the distribution of x at time zero uh, here f zero is nothing but the partition function so is minus kvt log of, of the partition function or uh, well actually uh, here is minus kvt uh, log of the partition function the partition function is just uh, something like this is sum over x e to the minus beta a e x at time zero remember i'm having here e x zero because the energy the hamiltonian is changing in time very important eh? Okay, this is um, the um, initial distribution and the final distribution is similar because I end in equilibrium. P x, uh, P, sorry, P plus x zero because this is the beginning of the backward process. So in the backward process at time zero, I'm in equilibrium. This is E to the minus beta E x, uh, I can call it T minus ft okay why am i'm using ext this is the energy in the forward process at time t because time zero in the backward process is time t in the forward process okay so this is the energy x at time t and this is ft which has equivalent so ft is the same thing as here so i copy the same thing but they have minus b e xt okay so these are the initial and the final um, distributions for the uh, position of the particle, right? And now uh, something that is very simple to prove is that you can compute the probability for the trajectory xt divided by the probability in the time reverse process to see the time reverse trajectory. Okay, so you do an experiment, you you get a trajectory, and you you do many experiments and this gives you the probability to see that trajectory. And now you, you ask yourself, what is the probability that if I run the process in reverse, I get the time reversal of the, tra the trajectory I just observed, okay? You can show easily that this is the probability. First I do this one, is the probability of x zero times zero, and then it's the probability of the rest of the trajectory given the initial value. Okay, yes. this is just Bayes theorem. And now in the backward, you do probability plus of x zero plus zero. 
the probability in the backward of xt backward given x final zero, okay? Because at time zero in the backward, we are in xf, which is the final in the forward. All right, so now, uh, now it comes something very important. Actually, this is related to what I explained yesterday, that you can first um, recall that these two things, the ratio between the conditional probabilities is related to the heat. This is what I, I assumed uh, yesterday. And we can say that this part is just E exponential of minus beta, the heat associated to the trajectory xt. And the second thing, because we start and end in equilibrium, we can use this relation and see that that race of probabilities is e to the minus beta, the difference of the energies minus the difference of the free energies. So we can write this as um, e to the, okay, and maybe this is, there's not much space, e to the beta delta e minus delta f. Okay, very important point when you read a Crookes paper, and I don't know if it's very much emphasized. This is stochastic. It depends on the trajectory. This is also stochastic. It depends on the initial and the final value. This is not stochastic. This is deterministic. Okay, these are numbers. This is, comes from the normalization of the probability. You see, we are summing over all possibilities. This is not stochastic but all the rest is stochastic. Okay, so how can I write this? I can also write it using the first law as E to the beta, the work done in the trajectory xt minus the free energy change. So this is the non-equilibrium work and this is the equilibrium free energy change. We often call this uh, dissipation. Now the dissipation at the trajectory xt, okay? And also we can show that this, okay, this is the same thing I explained yesterday. So you can also write it as e to the s dot of xt divided by k, okay, fine. So this is very basic and I think it's easy to prove. And now it comes, uh, in order to prove, I will go in, I'm going to do a very um, unconventional proof of the fluctuation theorems. I think it's a, it's a, it's a nice one, which is, um, I will reproduce a result that appears in the paper by Crookes in, in PRE, which is uh, really nice. And the result is the following. So we will consider averages of functionals. So we will take functional, a function of the trajectory, uh, omega of x. Okay. Let me just, instead of putting xt, let me just take this out and, and put x. Okay. You understand what I'm talking about? It's just a trajectory. So functional, as you know, it's a it's an object, a mathematical object that transforms something, a trajectory, that is a, a point in Rn into a real number, okay? This could be whatever. So what Crookes shows in this, this could be, for example, the entropy, it could be the heat, the work, etc. What Crookes shows is something is as follows. So consider a functional and take the average of this functional, for example, the work, in the forward process. Okay, this is what I consider like this. So this will be the sum over all possible trajectories of, uh, okay, sorry, if I'm not following my notes well, of the probability to see a trajectory times the function, okay, omega x. Fine. This is just the definition of uh, the average in the forward process. Now, what I'll do is I use this relation. Probability for any trajectory, I can write it as e to the beta, the dissipation of the trajectory times the time reversal, probability in the time reversal. So this would be sum over x, probability, the backward process of the backward trajectory, time reverse trajectory. Okay, let me take this out. This because I'm just following the notation of Crookes paper. And then we get exponential of beta, the dissipation of the, this trajectory. Here is not the time reverse, eh? be careful. Here it is. And then we have omega of x y, okay? 
Very simple. I just applied a uh, deflector isotherm. Now uh, I recognize that um, W is odd under time reversal. The dissipation and the entropy production, uh, if, if I calculate it over a time reverse trajectory, this is minus the dissipation of the trajectory. Okay? This you can see it very easily because if you change here x by xt bar, this will be the inverse of the previous one. So it would be, uh, if you take logs, this would be the minus. Okay? So this means that the dissipation on the entropy production is odd under time reversal. Okay? Because of this property, I can change this one by okay, sum over x, p plus x reverse, e of minus beta w dissipation. So this is the dissipation of the time reverse trajectory. Okay? And now I will uh, introduce an assumption. So first, this is a fact, entropy production or dissipation is odd and it's a reversal. And now I introduce an assumption that the functional omega is even under time reversal. Okay, here I use xt. Okay, let me use xt, but this is the same as x with a bar. Okay, it's equal to omega. Actually, I can do it like this in the time reverse of the time reverse trajectory is uh, something like this. Okay, this is an assumption of the result, and this means that this even under time reversal. Okay, so if I assume this, I change omega evaluated at x by omega plus evaluated at xt plus. Okay, this was an assumption. And you will see there are many observables. There are many functionals we can, we can use with this property. And there, you will see it's very nice. It's an assumption, but there are many interesting functionals that are in it. Okay, so I reached here and you see that everything is with pluses. So I can also write this as um, e sorry, the average of E minus beta, the dissipation uh, times omega plus in the reverse process. This is the result of this theorem. The average of a functional, of an even functional in the forward process equals the exponential of minus the dissipation times the functional in the, in the ensemble of the reverse process. Okay, this looks very mathematical, and, and in reality, it is. It is very mathematical. But um, another version of this uh, theorem will be the case in which, imagine I put here e to the minus beta w dissipation. So if I do the same story, here I will have the e minus beta w this, which will cancel with this, and I will get an analogous version of this theorem, which will be omega. E minus beta dissipation. Remember, these all are functionals in the forward equals omega plus in the backward. Okay, this is the same as what I showed you. Uh, this theorem is very important. It is um, not so much highlighted by many people in the field, but uh, to me, it is the nicest way to show the practical theorem. Uh, me and a collaborator of mine, Rafael Chetrit, we call this. Uh, Mother fluctuation theory. Okay, so is the mother fluctuation theory. We call it like this because it's it has a, you can derive many children out of it, and uh, one of them is is very famous, which is the uh, Yarsinski equality, and another one is also very famous, which is the um, Crookes theorem. So I will use this mother fluctuation theorem. Uh, we can also call it father as you want. Uh, but it is this one, E minus beta W this in the forward equals uh, omega plus in the reverse. Okay, this is the, the, the mathematical result. And I will take uh, one example of these functionals. One functional that I will take is the following. Imagine the most stupid functional you can think of, which is omega equals to one, <laughs> okay? So this functional takes a trajectory and gives you always as output one, okay? <laughs> this is uh, even because if you apply this uh, to the time reversal trajectory, <laughs> this is also one, 
Okay, so it is equal to omega of xt. So it's even, fine. Okay, so if we apply this equation to one, we get one times e to the minus, minus beta of the dissipation. Uh, I won't put forward because when I put nothing, so if I do this, this is equal in my notation to forward, okay? So e minus beta w this, which is exponential of minus beta w uh, minus delta f. Remember here, w is stochastic, but delta f is um, deterministic. This is equal to one average in the reverse. So it's equal to one. Uh, delta f, I told you it's deterministic. So I can take it out of this and I can move it to the right. So I can, I can write this as e minus beta w stochastic equals e minus beta delta f deterministic. This is probably the most famous result, important result in stochastic thermodynamics. I'm making a big square here and it's called the Yarsinski equality. The Yarsinski's fluctuation theorem. Yarsinski's equality. So I'm not proving this result using the, res um, the paper by Yarsinski, but I'm proving the result from here, which is one line. Okay. This is very, very, very important result in thermodynamics. It's, it's, you should be very surprised by this because we are getting a quantity from equilibrium, which is delta F from measurements of non-equilibrium. So you can do a process infinitely fast, compute the work. This stochastic work I was talking two days ago and it was something very esoteric or something very um, strange. And this gives you information of the equilibrium properties. So to get the free energy in this process, you have to, delta F is the work when you do the system infinitely slowly, quasi-static. And some processes, <laughs> have infinite relaxes on time. So you cannot do this process infinitely slow. Also, you have an experiment and you don't have all your life to, to do an experiment. So this equation is extremely insightful because you can get equilibrium free energies from non-equilibrium uh, measurements of work. Okay, this is just uh, an appetizer of, of, of all I want to say about this equality, but just this is a proof. Uh, I'm, I'm just introducing the key results. Another one that is very spectacular and it's kind of a um, generalization of Jasinski is, is called the Crookes fluctuation theorem that you can obtain with the following choice. So you can take as omega the following, a delta function for the work of a trajectory P equal to small w. Be careful because this is big w, function of the work and a small w is a number, okay? And uh, you can pick as the other functional. You can pick the following, delta of W tilde. So this is the work in the time reversal process applied to the time reversal trajectory to be equal to minus W. So this is related to the probability in the time reversal process to see a work of value minus W. You can show easily that this is equal. Okay, W plus X plus is minus, uh, sorry, is, is plus W uh, X. You can show that this is equal to uh, W, okay, sorry, W X, sorry, this is X minus W. So these are even in reality, okay? So um, this is very important. So this is just applying deltas. And when you apply these two functionals in our theorem, in here in the mother fluctuation theorem, we show that this is, okay, W X forward minus value W, E minus beta W dissipation evaluated at X tilde. Okay, this is in the forward equals the average of delta uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm making a big mistake here. Delta, I have a problem to see my notes, so uh, give me a second. W plus plus W. Okay, so this is 
W plus X bar plus W in the reverse, okay? This is in the forward and this is in the reverse. So very important is that here, again, I take out the E beta delta F because it's deterministic. And what I get uh, next is delta of W X bar minus small W E to the minus beta W X, okay, in the forward. Uh, okay, let me just do like this, equals, uh, okay, the same thing, which is delta W plus, X plus, plus W in the reverse. Okay, and now uh, some of you will notice um, that what comes out of here, so we are doing an integral with a delta function. So we will take out the value of the work to be equal to W. So it will be E beta delta F, E minus beta W. And, and then what, what's left is uh, the average of a delta. So the average of a delta with a probability distribution becomes the probability, the forward process to get the value of the work equal to W. And what we get here is an average of delta. It means we are only summing those events where this happens. So this is also probability. It will be in the reverse process to get a work for value minus W. This is a very nice result. And if you divide one by the other, you get this equation, P of W. This is a value W and eh? not the stochastic work, P reverse minus w equals the exponential of beta w minus delta f. And this is also one of the key results in stochastic thermodynamics, and it's called Crookes partition theorem. Okay, this is really important result as well for this field. So this is Crookes no, it's not like this, be careful, because the name of the, oh, is Crookes, Gavin Crookes, don't write like this. Crookes fluctuation theorem, fluctuation relation. And uh, what this means is the following, that you can relate the probability in the forward process to get a work W to the probability in the backward process to get work minus W it's related by the dissipation. So uh, in other words, if you do an experiment, remember we had the forward experiment. Let's, let's say you do this process many times. Sorry, it's not very nice. You do this process many, many, many times from left to right, uh, and you collect a histogram distribution of work. So this will be W, and you will obtain distribution like this. Okay, of course, this will be the average work in the forward process, if it's Gaussian. Of course, the average work, as I told you, is greater than the free energy change. So typically the free energy change will be here, unless you do this infinitely slowly, infinitely slowly, this, this line here will go here, okay? This will be the probability density in the forward process to get an amount of work W. What does this theorem says? It says that if you do the backward process, and plot the distribution to get work minus W, it will typically be different and typically will be something like this. Something like this and like this, okay? This will be the probability in the backward process. Remember, this must have different sign because we are doing the process in reverse. So we do the, we get, instead of doing work, we extract work here. So this will be the average of uh, work the reverse process of minus work, sorry, this will be PR minus W, okay? And very importantly is that what is the value at which these histograms cut? These histograms you can get from, from the equation, they cut when, okay, PF, let me call the cut, well, actually the cut will be at, at delta F, this is, I'm anticipating, PF at W, this is the cut, uh, is divided by P reverse uh, minus W. This is when they cut equals to one. 
If you put a one here, it means that this happens only when W star equals delta F. So if you do a process, collect the work distribution, you do the time reverse process, you collect the work distribution and you plot the distribution of minus the work, they will cut at delta F. And this happens at any speed of the process. This is a universal relation. It is true for any velocity of course. This is very nice, uh, it's very insightful. And uh, okay, I just finished by saying that the way, um, well, I think I will need a, a second lecture on this topic because this is uh, very important in the field. Um, the way experimentalists check this, and I'll show you in the next lecture um, experimental results, is instead of plotting distributions like this, what they do is they take logarithms. If you take logarithms, you get e, e, F, w, e, R minus w equals beta w minus delta f. Okay, so it is linear with the work. So experimentalists typically, what they, what they do is they do the ratio between these uh, histograms and they get fine points like this. So they plot the logarithm of e, f, w divided by p reverse minus w versus w. They get some data like this. I'll show you, in, in, I, I've, I've also done this type of analysis with experimentalists. Then it happens that this goes like a line. It's, it's linear with W. The slope is beta, so one over KVT. So you can get the temperature of the system measuring the work. This is very, very nice. And the, the intercept, Y intercept here is minus beta delta F. So you can get the free energy by doing a process, the equilibrium free energy by doing a process infinitely fast, any speed you want, or you can get it also from the start. Okay, so these are consequences. So well, it's the x intercept, is the other intercept, maybe no? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, is the x intercept? Yes, because this must be okay. When this is w equals to delta f, log is zero. So yeah, it's, <laughs> sorry, it's here. <laughs> This is here, exactly. Yes, exactly. It's the x-intercept, that's a good point. Um, yes, so with the x-intercept, you will get the free energy change and the beta will be uh, the slope. So if you do the process, if you do a process which has a different free energy change, but the same temperature, uh, what you will get is uh, mainly something like this. This is when you change the temperature, for instance. No, no, sorry. This is when you change free energy. So here you go, go to beta uh, delta F prime. Okay. Actually, here delta F is negative. That's why you are here. So typically, if delta F is positive, you will come here. Okay. Uh, and if you change the temperature, you will change the slope. So if you have a different temperature, instead of this, you will have something like this. Okay. This would be at a higher temperature. Uh, all. Okay, so this shows that there are universal results. These, these are true for all the systems I was explaining, Langevin, dynamics, Markov chains, electronic systems, etc. And there are all these processes have been tested uh, for all these types of processes. In particular, the first test which was, was a paper uh, with Felix Retort uh, with uh, biological systems, which were RNA hairpins. And uh, it was very spectacular, I must say. So I, I show you in the next lecture this uh, in more carefully. But I prefer now uh, that you ask me questions because um, I went more or less halfway of what I wanted to explain today. But I think it's important we we have questions as well. Sir, can you explain how uh, the for? I mean, uh, I understand starting with a uh, at some initial condition which is at equilibrium. How does one end at equilibrium at time t? You can let you can. Okay, something very important is that you don't need to end in equilibrium. In the backward process, you start in equilibrium. So you can manipulate a system. You start in equilibrium. You end up out of equilibrium but with a value of the, of the control parameter lambda. And now you wait for a while, you let the system relax and you start the backward process. 
So in the backward process, you start in equilibrium. Okay. And uh, actually, I can show you something which probably is uh, interesting. Um, okay, give me a second because I have to find the, the paper. So we did a test uh, with optical tweezers of, of this theorem. Um, one second, eh, because we have to uh, find the right reference, uh, which is not what I'm. Okay, okay, I think. Okay, this is probably not the best. Um, okay, I can show you some experimental data. Uh, I can share. This one is a paper we published in 2013. It's already a while. And here we had um, it's an optical tweezer. I don't know if I have a, a no, <laughs> we don't have a here uh, illustration, but we are dragging an optical tweezer. This is the, uh, this black line here is the center of the trap. So initially we are for a while, the, the center of the trap is at for example, minus 50 nanometers. We wait until you reach equilibrium. Then we drive by moving the trap to plus 50 nanometers. And then we let the system relax. And then we go backwards. So we start the backward process in an equilibrium um, state. We drive it. Here we are out of equilibrium, but we let the system relax. And then we start the forward process um, in equilibrium. This is the, the setup that is used in Crookes theorem. And I can show you, uh, look here, we are doing the histogram of the work in the forward, divided by the histogram of the work in the backward. Uh, actually, there's a minus missing here, but OK. <laughs> this was a, an errata you see here, minus. This is correct. And you see that uh, there is a linear uh, relation between um, this asymmetry quantity and the work. And here, OK, this is at different temperatures because we could control the temperature of the system, they cut in the same place, so the same free energy change, close to zero. And, and here you see a clear manifestation of, of the theorem. So it's a, this is experimental test. You can see in this paper with uh, Ignacio Martinez in, in PRE 2013. Um, so it's, it's a very nice test, but you, you will find <laughs> hundreds of papers with experimental tests. Eh? So I'm not saying this is the most <laughs> important one. This is just one more of a big class of, of experimental tests. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, so I had another uh, uh, question, uh, like it was regarding, once again, <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, lunch. You can, send, you can, look, you can send me the question later by email. Right? It's also fun. So if, <laughs> if you need more time, uh, it's also okay. Yeah? No, no, so I just remembered it. So you mentioned that uh, this uh, theorems are uh, work for uh, Langevin system, Markovian system, and uh, discrete system, I think. Uh, so does it work for underdamped uh, fluct I mean, these fluctuation theorems? Yes, 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 totally, totally. Uh, yes, because uh, up to here, I, I show you only, okay, how can I go back in one second? Eh? Um, Sorry, but I'm having a lot of difficulties today. So the proof that I showed you uh, today, okay, I see. This proof is based only on this, which is just probability theoretic uh, argument. So I didn't use almost nothing here. I just uh, defined the entropy of a trajectory that is overdamped. So here, I, there is no momentum degrees of freedom, but you can easily extend this to momentum degrees of freedom by considering that this uh, when you reverse, you also change the sign of the momentum. So it, it is not much to do this for underdamped systems. This is for all systems in which the dissipation is, takes this um, expression, okay? So this is uh, Markovian systems in general. This is overdamped Langevin equations, underdamped Langevin equations as well. So it's, that's why these theorems are important because they are valid for many, uh, a big class of physical systems. Inertia does not change this uh, this result. Okay, uh, just uh, on this, uh, this time reverse trajectories are basically even the protocol is time uh, time reversed or the, it with with the same protocol but with a different initial condition. It has to track to the original trajectory. Is that how it works? Okay, okay. Um, so uh, it is more simple than you, what you're thinking. This is a process which has a protocol lambda t. Okay, 
And this is a, another process, which has a protocol, which is lambda tilde t, which is a lambda of tau minus t, where tau is the final time of the protocol. So it's one protocol is, is doing, for example, like this. Okay, I don't know <laughs> what's the best <laughs> illustration. I think you understand to me. Uh, one protocol is doing, for instance, this. <laughs> okay, I'm totally <laughs> throwing <laughs> reversible protocols. Uh, give me a second. So one protocol is doing this. Okay, and the other protocol is doing this. Okay. This is the lambda and this is lambda plus. Okay. And the protocol lambda produces trajectories. So what I'm putting here is a given trajectory of in the protocol uh, lambda, in the forward protocol, which could be, for example, this one. Okay, this one. And now this is the probability here. This is the probability in the backward process to see exactly this one. It's difficult because the backward process starts from here. So this is very a very unlikely trajectory, but it can happen. We are saying, can happen. We assume that all trajectories are, are, are likely, even very small. That's why this is weighted by the dissipation. When you do a process in equilibrium, these two things are very similar. So probabilities of trajectories and time reverse are the same. The more non-equilibrium, the more different they are and the more dissipation. Uh, but this is one thing for this to prove this. Okay. But this is just a mathematical trick to go into the key result. This result says I do a forward process many times and I collect a histogram and I do a backward process many times and I collect a histogram. I don't need that after one trajectory of the forward, I see the same trajectory in the backward. No, no, I don't need that. I don't need that. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, maybe other questions? May I ask people? a question? Yes, please. Let's take um, last question, yes. Um, I have a, I want to know if I got it right. Um, can I say that um, the phase space in the way we are doing these calculations, the phase space has become, for example, two different parts that in, in, in the parts there is equilibrium and from, there is a path from those two these parts together, which uh, make the, um, um, what was it, balance. Uh, okay, so, so the, I think uh, what you're thinking is much more complicated than what, I, what I'm explaining. So the, there is there's no breaking, uh, there's, there is just a process uh, that I run forward and this process generates trajectories. And then there is a backward process that I run backward that generates trajectories. There is no, yeah, I don't sure, know. But the first and the last parts are in equilibrium. In the middle part, the trajectories are not in equilibrium. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. So I start in equilibrium yes. and I drive the system away from equilibrium, okay? So the system is, okay, the system is initially in equilibrium with value lambda zero. And now I, I'm driving the system with lambda t. And along this, this driving, the system is out of equilibrium. Mm -hmm. It's out of equilibrium, whatever, OK? And now I finish with a value of the protocol, which is here, lambda f. This is the forward process. In the backward process, OK, this forward trajectory can do whatever. But then I will, I will let this relax, because I will keep my protocol at lambda f. Okay, mm -hmm. but here I'm not doing work, so I'm doing nothing. There is only relaxation. And now I will execute this process backwards. So I will go like this. Okay, I go backwards and I go like this. So in other words, I do like this, then I relax equilibrium, and then I do the opposite, which would be like this. Okay, mm -hmm. so here I'm in equilibrium here. I am out of equilibrium all the time. Here I'm relaxing to equilibrium. It's a new equilibrium state here. And then I'm out of equilibrium. That's the setup. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so we have just a uh, four minutes break before the next lecture. So thank you very much again, uh, Edgar. And Thanks to all of you. To your next uh, lecture.
for your attention. Thank you. See you soon.